So you will need your wooden barbecue skewer. So this is this is optional, but it does make a massive difference. It makes things so much easier. And then um, you can use carded wool or you can use wool top. Either works absolutely fine for this. Um, and that's and we're doing the head and the body and the legs separately. We've got some nice sort of pure black wool here for face details, but any dark wool will do. And then I've got this. If you've got the kit, you've got this beautiful, it's called Sienna, gorgeous, and it's perfect for the, the corgi. But any any sort of brown, light, mid sort of mid-brown, anything with a bit of sort of um, tan colour to it, something sort of a little bit orangey would work. And then if you remember when we made um, Daphne here, the chicken, we did a top coat to really smooth it out. Well, that's how we have done Willow. And um, it just means it just makes it so much easier because once we put the head on and the nose we put on separately as well, it just makes it so much easier just to, to pop it over and then felt around it. And we've got this perfect body shape. So here we are. Okay. Right, so we are going to start with the body. Now, I'll just measure this. The entire thing, so the body is going to be only about five and a half centimetres. And then we add the head as well. So I tend to guesstimate things. But take your wool top. You, um, I think I've used for the entire dog this this carded wool sorry or wool top i think i've used about 14 grams if that helps um but anyway we're just going to start we're going to make a really sort of rough shape around our barbecue skewer and we use a wooden one we use something wooden because it just the wool just holds really well and remember if you're using the carded wool hold it close to the skewer because it's shorter fibers it will pull away more easily it's not a, an issue if it does you just add some more and continue but we just we're keeping our fingers there and what we don't want to do is we want to keep this wool nice and flat we don't want it to twist so we just hold it there and then if you want if you feel oh, that's one side don't matter. this is the 38 don't use a fine needle when you're doing this they bend so easily and then just a few tacks with that needle just to hold it there and then continue to wrap. Oops. And what we're aiming for, we're aiming for a sort of chubby cone shape. So it's going to be narrower at the top and then fatter at the bottom. And we're just going to keep wrapping and it will look all unsightly, but that's OK. And then we've got to here. So I'm just going to felt that again and we're not really creating the shape so much yet and what i would say is um whichever end you decide is going to be the neck end keep it loose because we want um it makes it much easier to attach to the head so let's keep going so keep wrapping sure that it's nice and smooth you can use a 36 for this as well or um I, these are really good you can you know use this when um when it comes off the stick or if you've got a clover pen again you've got two needles there but you actually only need one that i'm just working around so it's starting to firm up nicely now and because we pulled it quite tightly around the barbecue stick when we um when we wrapped it round 
that makes it much quicker and easier to felt. Forgot about the neck. Keep this. Sorry, I forgot about the neck there. Just keep this neck loose because you want to be able to have some. And we can add fresh wool. And then I'm just going to go to the base again. When we take this off and when we're doing our final um, bits of the project, we can we can make sure it's nice and stable. And now, can you see? I'm just going diagonally because I'm just, you know, I want to sort of smooth and shape that top layer. And I'm going in the direction, so I want to narrow it that way. So I'm working backwards from the wider end, and the needle is pointing towards the end that I'm wanting to narrow. And can you see how that's made? So rather than just going straight in, which really is just going to felt that area, when you do this, you actually, this is your shaping process. Right, I'm just going to here, I just feel like I just need to make that base just a little bit wider. So I'm just going to pull off just a little piece. I'm just going to felt that on here. And again, if you've got a nice coarse wool top, I use those as well for this. Um, Jacob, Swaledale, Shetland, all work really well. And it's all under cover anyway. It's going to be covered up. But even if it's not, still work just as well. You just need to, to make sure that you spend a bit more time than I do smoothing it and shaping it. And use your hands as well. You can roll it in your hands. And use your needle as well. This Doing that with your needle really smooths things out. If you're in the felt hub, I did um, a, a, my top tip Tuesday post, which I'm really enjoying, actually. Um, it's all about finding your needle felting confidence. Even if you've started needle felting and, you know, you want to move on to the next stage and you, you don't feel quite ready. Um, it's it's a really encouraging blog post and hopefully it will give you the, the umph to just pick up those felting needles and have a go because it doesn't matter. Remember, it is all about you. It's what you are making. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Don't show it to anyone if you don't want. It's it's about what you get out of it and nothing else. And your mental health, believe me, will thank you for it. There we go. So we've got quite a nice shape going on here. I hope you're getting on okay with that too. Um, I am going to take this off the stick now and just carry on with it for a little while. But can you see... That is firm, but still squishes. You know, it's not over felted. And don't worry about any bits that you've got in there because they'll be covered up. If not, just, just tease them out. And I'm just, again, working diagonally, just creating this shape. That is the shape. There we go. Body ready. Let's move on to the head. So here we are. Let's think, shall we? Yeah, I think what we'll do is if you've got quite a thick bit of wool, then split it down the centre. And we're going to do the old favourite knotting technique. And you could, again, create this on the barbecue skewer, which I've shown you before. But we're going to do this slightly differently today. We'll just do this with the knot. So take it, hold it close to the centre and pull a knot. Keep your fingers close so the wool doesn't pull away and pull a knot. And then do the same. There we go. We've got a, a second knot there. 
shall I be brave and go for a third knot? Because what this does is it reduces so much felting. There we go. We've got a third knot. Now, if you feel that, you've got a nice sort of circular shape already and it's really firm. So that's the kind of core of your, of your head already created. So you've saved time and you've got a nice shape. So then what we're going to do, we're going to take the tail and we're just going to wrap it around like so on one side and that's the end bit there so we're just going to felt those in there we go so you see lovely shape already super fast Just this little bit here that's loose. Just felt, there we go. So let's have a look. So that's a good shape, but I do think we need to add a little bit more. So I'm just going to take a thin piece like this. And this, these are going to sort of be my cheeks. So I'm just going to wrap this around like so. They'll probably change and my cheeks will probably end up on the other side. But I just felt it just needed to be a little bit bigger there. And so that that's a key point, really, when needle felting is you can always add more. But once you've felted things on, unless it's a limb or an ear or something like that, which you can pull off quite easily and change, when you're doing the bulk parts like head and the body, when you've felted it, you can't unfelt it. All those fibres have locked together. Um I mean, I have been known to chop heads off and, and add some fresh wool if I've spent a lot of time on a head. So as you can see now, what you can do is you can use your fingers to shape it. So we've got some nice, can you see, that's going to go on lovely. And what you can also do is if you want to just smooth it, you can just pop it in your hands. If you're not using a top layer, this is a really good tip. About three and a half centimetres across both ways. But if you want to widen it, just squish it with your fingers and that will kind of squash it down. And I'm just poking around with my fingers here because I kind of want to bring those this top part in so it's got more of a head. There we go. So can you see how I've just used, I'm showing you that backwards now. I've just used my fingers just to sort of squish up the head there. But we can add more on. We'll come back to that. I'm just going to, still a little bit soft there. I'm just going to felt that down a little bit. So now what we need to do is look at the head and decide which is going to be the front. Okay. So your eyes are going to be around here. And what we want to do is we want to create this this protruding nose, not too much. Now, I always do this separately. I never try and shape it with it, with it, you know, I never try to create a shape with that protrusion, the same with legs and things like that. Um, I did when I started and then I quickly learned that, so that's like the hard way. So all you want to do is just take a really small piece of, um, wool i mean you could all actually i'll show you you can do this on the barbecue skewer you can just wrap it round the skewer like so and just felt it on keep the ends loose though don't felt those ends And 
And what you'll find with this is you might do it a couple of times. You know, it might be the wrong shape. It might be the wrong size, but that's OK. But important, keep these ends loose because these are what we're going to attach to the face. So we want this nice and firm. And the reason it needs to be nice and firm is because once we put the batting on top or not, if you're not using the batting, you're going to put the, the detail of the nose on. Now, if this isn't firm, and this is really important, if this isn't firm, you're going to distort the shape. And you don't want to do that. So we sort of aim to get this center part really firmly felted whilst leaving these ends loose. It looks really long, maybe too long, actually, but we shall see. I might be able to, to fix that when I put it on. Let's uh, let's go down this length and shorten it. So you can see how I'm shortening that just by pushing straight down the entire piece. Watch your finger at this end. It's shortening it, but I'm not felting these ends. OK, so take that off and let's have a look there so it's going to go here so can you see how we're going to do that we're going to have this protruding nose and i think i think that'll be okay actually so i'm going to hold that on like so hold one end felt it on that's why the loose parts are important same this side We've kind of got this weird, oh, I've used this before. I use this for gnome noses. That's a great technique for making gnome noses, by the way. And then just make sure, and then just go around these edge parts here. And just make sure they're attached to the face. So we're going to have this nice protrusion here. And then if it's a bit if it's sticking out too far, then just go into it from the front. There we go. So what will happen is we'll cover this up and we won't see any of that. But what I've got here now is I've got no chin. So I'm going to add just a little bit more wool under here so we don't lose that chin. But we are sort of creating the base for our final piece. And it's all it's not difficult. It's just about knowing how to do it. And, you you know, you may you may I'm sure you have lots of different techniques that work for you, maybe, you know, better or you have a preference. But there you go. So can you see pop that on the side? And then we've got this here. So create that shape and then put another layer of wool on top and that will cover all these seams. Get it as nicely shaped as you can before you do that because what you don't want to do is over felt the um, top layer here. And that is quite nice. And then I'm just going to, there's a little bit too much line going on here. So I'm just going to just pop a little bit in there just to smooth that area out. Just bring that around the edges. There we go. So can you see now how we've we've built up on that shape? I bet I end up with a wonky nose because it's live. There we go. So that is the head. OK, that is the head done. And that is going to sit on the body. Now, when I say that this is basically a base for anything you want to make, I made a little this was a couple of weeks ago. I did something very I used a very similar same technique and I made this fox. And can you see I've done exactly the same just slightly different shapes. 
So you could make a whole array of sort of woodland animals doing um, uh, using this technique, sheep, hares, um, chickens, anything you like. So you could have a whole lot of fun with that. And it's really, you know, really simple. OK, so there we go. Head and body. OK, next, we're going to make the legs. And we are going back to our barbecue skewer because this is what makes it so easy. So barbecue skewer, just thin. These legs are quite short. In fact, I've got them sticking out too long here. When I add them to this one, I'll, I'll push them up a bit. Um, so can you see they're only about. So that is three and a half centimetres total. Really doesn't need to be any longer than that or, or an inch about three centimetres, three and a half centimetres, or approximately an inch and a bit. So again, as we did before, we are taking our barbecue skewer, we're taking a thin piece of wool, doesn't matter whether it's carded or wool top, just keep it thin, because what you don't want to end up with is really bulky legs. So let's just get wrapping that round, and this is really easy because there's no shaping to this. So keep it pulled really tight. When we, if you've done parsley, you will know the hair. You will know what I am talking about. You want nice, firm legs. And you're going to keep one end loose. So let's just leave it there. And just till it holds. Right. So I'm going to keep this end loose because this is where we're going to attach it to the body and keeping it. I mean, keep it really loose, like unfelted, because this is a great way of making sure that you don't see any seams or finishes. I know we're going to cover it up, but a lot of projects, we don't do that. So if you keep, always keep, that's the tip, keep the limbs Um, the where they're going to be attached, keep them loose. So I'm just going to pull that off, wrap that around there, and then you can just run it around your hand if you wish. Oh, we've got that on, and because we wrapped it really tightly, it's already firm. Can you see? There's your paw already, and we're just pushing into that paw there, just turning the skewer and creating that leg. The first one's easy. It's getting the second one to match. That's um, that's fun. But there you go. You see, that's our paw done, ready. Really don't need to do any more than that. And keep that nice and loose. Take that off. Now you've got that one for reference. If you've got a little hole in the end, just tease with your needle. Make sure you're using your 38, not your fine needle or your reverse. So, yeah, so what we tend to do is we'll, we'll go on Pinterest or, or we'll go on to these gorgeous sites and we'll see all these amazing needle felted projects and think, oh, I want to make that. And then we go off and then we end up really disappointed. But really, is there any wonder? Because what you've done is you're on chapter one. The person whose project you've just looked at is probably on at least chapter five. So you can't compare those two. So you must start on chapter one, you know, allow yourself to learn, allow yourself to be a beginner and um, the rest will come really easily. Just take a deep breath and learn, even if it's just creating basic shapes like this. Don't even start by making a project. Just start by getting your felting needle, your mat and your wool and learning how it all meshes together. There we go. So that's one leg. Right, here's the phone. I'm going to try and make one that matches. So there we go. It's slightly shorter. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it in my hand like so and roll it. There you go. Now they're both exactly the same size. And that's all you have to do. So let's just firm up these feet. Doing good for time. Quite pleased. Oh, also, if you couldn't get a crown when you ordered, I'm so sorry, but as you can imagine, <laughs> crowns were very popular. Um, I I can't even, I mean, I grossly underestimated, like I said, how many 
people would want a corgi and um i just i just didn't have enough crowns um i just i just couldn't get any more that's a little bit narrower you don't have to do anything but if you want just a quick tip pop a little bit around the base and that will fatten that up a little bit so it's the same size there you go right there we go our little paws are there okay now can you see on um these paws i've got these can you see that is that focused these little details um if you want to add them so all i've done here is the the brown that i've used for the top layer of the body i won't do all of them i'll just quickly show you how to do it just you really want a super thin piece like so just roll it in your hand like this and then felt one end in quite firmly because then you want to pull that around the foot to the other side and can you see when you do that how it leaves a little sort of indentation there it just creates some shape and then just go to the other side and then all you do is trim off the excess so as you can see what i always like to do is make all our parts separately so our legs are done so i think we'll make um we'll do the tail tail is really easy barbecue skewer again this is a great way to do this so thin piece of wool wrap it round get it started and it's all the same thickness again remembering to leave one end loose quite a bit on the end loose as well because we're going to um attach it to its bottom so there we go so work down keep working down and then work back up keep working i'll use all of this just so easy that was and i've hardly felted anything okay which bit i think this will be the the tip of the tail so it wants to be nice and round and then work down the sides diagonally and let's get this tail tip when we're going to add some top color onto this as well like we have done here and we've just attached it at the base there okay so there we see we've got this nice loose bit here I'm just going to tighten that up and that's what's going to attach and again don't worry about too much about the length of the tail but this is including the loose bit that is oh around seven centimeters and just yeah about two and a half inches and there we go that's your tail done take it off just if you've got that little hole in the end just tease over with your needle and then just make sure it's nice and firm and if you want to smooth it because this uh, this will have a, a top layer on if you just want to smooth it just roll it in your hands and make sure you've got any bits of grass out tail done i'm just going to pop the light on because i think we might be losing a bit of light here let's see if i'm going to affect the that's better that's better there we go so head body tail legs who wants to make some ears i'm going to show you how easy these ears are to make so what you want to do, and I remember to tell you this time, is two pieces more or less exactly the same. So let's just 
There we go. So this is um, Shetland wool top that I'm using here, but it's really coarse. So you know, there's always the big argument, what's better, carded wool or wool tops? So it depends what you're using. Merino is beautiful as a top coat, but really um, takes a long time to felt if you're doing this kind of thing. But if you're using a nice coarse wool top, which is all often called roving as well, you might you might refer to it as roving, you can create pieces that are just as lovely. The finish is just as good. And this is, um, a, if any of you have got the, the bundles, you'll feel this, you'll feel how rough it is. And then if you compare that to something like a merino, it's like night and day and it felt really, really well. So I'm just going to pull a little bit off there, a little bit off there. So what you want to make sure is that you start off with two pieces that are equalish in size and shape, or you can weigh them. You can weigh them if, if, if you want to. Okay, so pop them on there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, and you'll, um, if you follow my tutorials, you will have seen this technique before. I'm going to do draw a triangle with my needle. Like so. Okay, can you see that? Just the outline of a triangle. And if you want, do them both at the same time. So then you know that you're getting roughly the same shape and size. But I'll show you once when we do the second ear, I'll show you how easy it is just to make sure it's exactly the same as the, the first one. So I'll just move that out of the way. And then just bring that over, that top part. Now, where you have drawn that line with your needle, can you see how it's just caught onto that wool top? And pull the wool over, and once it stops there, felt that down. Do the same at the other side. Just pull it over gently until it stops and felt it down. If you've got a multi needle, you can speed it up by using that. Or your clover type tool. But don't do it for too long and then pull it away really gently because it will stick. Turn it over and continue to felt. Now, corgis have got quite. They're kind of, quite kind of wide ears. They're not particularly cup shaped. They're, they are, and they've got this nice soft tip to them, so they're slightly rounded. So keep working on that. Keep turning. And then have I got a punch tool handy? What these do, I find as well, is they get a really nice smooth finish when you're doing flat felting. So if you're making like the big hair ears, this is perfect. But can you see? And the, uh, the more you felt, the more that wool becomes entangled and, 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 and stuck together, the easier it is just to flip it and turn it. And that's telling you that this wool is matting together really nicely. Don't worry about these edge shapes. We'll come back to those. And um, don't worry about having too much there either. So there we go. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go along with my needle. And then if you have your bit of cardboard that I told you about before, you can actually pop it. Or perspex. A lot of uh, I've seen people use perspex for this because then you can actually see inside. But you can also use that. Just make sure you don't slip down the side. And that protects your fingers as well and allows you to create a nice edge. So can you see how that fluff is disappearing? So continue. These ears want to be nice and firm and quite, th you know, not, I think, how wide is that? That's about a mil and a half. No, it's not because that's inches. No, it's not. That's about four mils wide, uh, thick at the moment. Probably a bit less, but um, wants to be around three mils 
because it wants to be nice and firm so you can kind of just twist it and shape it and then work along the other edge and then come back to your punch tool all straight in and out with the punch tool never go even though you can go diagonally with a single needle you can't do that with a punch tool and you should all only be going through the top layer and never twist never twist because you will break all the needles if, if you use it properly it will last and last this has got this has got seven needles in and you can reduce that to however many you want depending on your project so um i think i've got what uh you know you reduce it to five and and the thicker your your project gets the less needles you will need but can you see how that ear has nicely shaped now we've got quite a few wispy bits on here and you can felt them in but I'm just going to, because this is felted and um, because it's not a woven fabric, it's not going to fray. It's not stitched. So you can just go along those edges and take off any wisps. And you can do the same along the top as well. If you want it really sort of wisp free. And I think you can iron it as well to flatten it. I think people find it, but obviously use a, a tea towel or something on top and, and not too hot a setting. But I know you can um, flatten things by ironing them as well. But really, you don't need to with this. So can you see you've got that really nice shape here? So we're going to go back to this one now. OK, so we kind of want, we, you know, we want both ears to be very similar in shape. I actually done really well. It's not <laughs> unlike me. I've managed to get them very similar, but you can still see it needs a little bit of shaping. So your first ear. Pop that on top of the second one and use that as your guide and then just. Work around. So the, the ear I'm working on is the one at the bottom. And if you're finding it's getting quite firm and, and difficult to, to work, then this is the, I've moved to the 40 triangular because I'm just going through these edges and top layers. And that seems to be working quite nicely. There we go. So I'm quite happy with that. Now, what I have noticed, though, is that this one is narrower than this one. So rather than try and make this narrower, what you can do is um, just pull. Pull with your fingers and that will widen it. And then just want to narrow this top part a little bit more. So please use your cardboard if you feel a bit safer that way or your finger protectors. Keep it flat and it should keep it away from your fingers. Don't, you know, don't poke and you want this nice and flat. There we go. I mean, they're never going to be exactly the same, but I think they're as near as damn it. I'm pretty pleased with that. And then I just added a tiny bit of sort of less is more detail here and you can add some dark in as well. So I'm just going to take some of that. Um, I like to use carded wool for this because what ha what I find is that carded wool you can really sort of fan it out and you don't end up with any lines and you hardly really need to to touch it so just with your 40 or your 38 but i'm using the 40 just just tack it on no more than that because if you if you do it if you overdo it you're going to create lines and it it doesn't matter if you know do it at different sides they don't you know the dogs are not symmetrical in, you know in their in their their colorings and patterns so There we go. So it just added a little bit of detail. And then we've got quite a lot here and I may end up cutting that, but we shall see. So they look huge, don't they? But honestly, when they go onto the head, 
they won't be like that. And what we'll probably end up doing is narrowing them a little bit further. But we've got the the bones of it there. So we've got everything. We've got our body, our head, our legs, our tail, and our ears. So we're now ready to attach it. What we're going to do is attach our head. Let me see. Where are we? Yeah, so that is... So can you see we kept this loose for a reason? So what I'm going to do, and this will end up all over the place to start with, I'm going to put the head down like that. Make sure you've, you've got it right way up. So this is the, let me check. Yeah, this is the chin and this is the top of the head. But I might actually swap. I think I'm going to swap that around, actually. <laughs> um, there you go. That's what happens. So I'm going to put that there. And this loose wool that you can see there, I'm going to stick that on top. Of the body and i'm going to where's my other needle gone that one i'm going to stick that on there and i'm just going to felt it so can you see these loose bits i'm going to go in from the top and i'm just going to poke in straight down see that's starting to hold just keep turning it around and we'll don't worry too much about the position at the moment. We just kind of want to get it, get it attached very loosely. And then we'll decide where we're going to reposition. OK, so now my nose is on the top of my head. <laughs> so I need to move that. I need to move that down. So I'm going to hold it there. So this is fiddly, but not difficult. I'm going to poke that head down. I'm going to push through the head into the neck. I'm going to do the same here. And just move it about as you think it needs moving. Don't worry about any unsightly lines or marks going to be covered up. So that's, that's coming on. Okay, so that's still very wobbly. But we're going to put some wool around the neck because have, have, uh, if you notice with the corgi, there's no sort of you, there's no sort of difference, differentiation. I can't even get my words out tonight, but you know what I mean. But um, that neck just and the head just kind of blends into the body. So we're going to deal with that in a moment. There we go. So that now is on quite firmly. You don't want it wobbling about. And then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of carded wool or wool top, whatever you're using, just a thin piece. And I'm going to pop that around the neck there. And this will be covered up again. So don't worry, we're just thickening out this neck because we don't really want a neck. There isn't one. It's going to work around the head. And what this also does is it allows us to attach it even more firmly. So just work around the neck. So base of the neck, top of the body, work that in. And then round again. We kind of want that neck to disappear so it looks as if it's uh, it looks as if we've made it all as one piece and that's all you need to do it's really as simple as that really there we go so can you see how that still think that nose needs to come down a little bit i'm just going to push that and you can be really rough with this as well that that nose just seems to be sticking in the air a little bit for me that's better that's better two body yay so let's have a look where are we at i think we're at the stage now where we are going to add that top coat let's just go to the base here make sure this is nice and flat 
Yeah, and you can also push it down to flatten it as well if it's a little bit unstable. Okay, looking good. Right, let's crack on with this top coat. So I've got here some carded um, batting. Um, you can use Jacob. Um, I think this is Jacob. Uh, we used Perrindale for the chicken, which because um, I wanted something a slightly a little bit whiter. But I think I've got carded Jacob here, which is also, I mean, there's not that much difference between the two. But what I'm going to do is I am going to separate it. And we're going to start and we're going to sort of cover it from the top and then work down. But let's make sure that any thin bits are not at the front. So can you see what I've done? I've just basically covered it. It looks like a ghost now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it there. I want to pull it quite snugly over that face. Can you see what I've done there? Don't worry about this. This is the bit that we need just to attach. So I'm just going to, I'm going to be covering this with a top coat. So we don't need to worry about any needle marks. I'm using a 40, but a 38 is absolutely fine. And then just work down diagonally. And what we don't want is we don't want any bagginess. So that's why we pull it down just a little bit with our hands, but not, not so much that we actually tear it. And then again, working down, we'll get rid of all this bulk in a minute. Bring it down here. And can you see now we've got this nice protrusion for the nose, but it's it's complete, it's just completely transformed now that we've covered it. And then we'll get the nose on. And I'm gonna felt a bit more fiercely at the back here because this bit is all going to be covered. So I'm not too concerned about over felting this at the back here but I want it nice and secure and then just make sure you're working diagonally because what we're going to do is we're going to pull that we're going to pull a lot of this off and then just those ends are just going to be felted at the base so we're not going to see any of that let's work on this front so I'm just going to, I'm going to hold here at the base and I'm just so I'm not pulling all of this and I'm just going to take off some bulk. And that is the front. So let's pull that round here and just felt underneath just so that's holding. So I want the front nice and smooth. The legs are going on. So again, most of it's going to be covered. Don't get too precious. And if you pull a bit away or there's patches, um, the bits that you pull off, you can just use those to cover up. And get this felted in. Okay, so this is where we're at now. So we've got this nicely felt. Now I'm noticing I've got a little thin area here where that mouth was, which is where that it's most common for this to happen. So I'm just going to take a little piece of carded wool and I'm just going to add some more there you go it's easy to do. then just pull that over the head and that will disappear so if you've got any baldy bits that's all you need to do 
There we go. Now I would probably work this for a little bit longer, maybe five more minutes, because there's some air here. But um, I want to sort of crack on. I don't want to eke it out too long. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm just going to take my multi-tool and I'm going to felt this base a little flatter. I've got a little bit of a line going on here. But there you go. So just keep working that until you're completely happy with it. That's good. OK, so now what we're going to do is um, we'll pop our nose on, I think, because the top coat I can kind of put a bit on and then leave you to the rest. But I really want to show you how to do the nose. So um, I'm going to take the eyes out of here and just pop them here just so it gives us and you can just use a, a dress pin if you wanted um for this and it just makes sure i mean you've got the center of your nose but it just helps when positioning so if you've got a dress pin use a dress pin or something like that or just make a mark with a little bit uh, a felt tip so there we go we can see where the nose needs to be now this is um you can use any dark wall. This is, um, I think this is Blue Face Lester. So what I'm going to do here is I've got the tiniest, I mean, a really small amount. Probably don't even need that much, actually. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to roll it in my hand in a circle with my finger. And then I'm just going to roll. And then I'm going to roll backwards and forwards so it's quite firm. And what I've created is a little seed shape. So if you can see that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold one end. I don't want it too far up the nose. I'm going to hold one end. I'm going to use my 40. And I'm just going to poke that in. And turn that round. And poke that other end in. Now, that's a good nose. That's a, you know, if you wanted to leave it at that, you could. But I'm going to shape mine a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work across the top. Just poking gently through. You see, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my 38 now. Because we made it nice and firm, remember, this allows us to create that shape. Just pull on the wool. Just slightly. And can you see how you're creating that V shape? Now, more often than not, you will do this two or three times before you are happy with it. But the joy is it's just you just pull it off. Don't persevere. If it's wrong, take it off and start again. And I'm not even going to mess with that anymore because it's not as good as that one. But I just know oh, I can't help it. I can't help it. Um, just use that needle just to drag that shape out. And then go back to your um, your 40, which will push through that wool. But I'm just going to leave it at that. It could be better, and I would mess about with it, but I'm not going to tonight. So there we go. That works a treat. And then using the same wool, I'm going to create a mouth. And you want a very, you want it thin, 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 thinner than that. Thinner than that even. Yeah, you've got a piece, now make it thinner. OK, see how thin that is and just it wants to be too long. Because what you're going to do is you're going to go just under the nose here. You're going to pop your. Fingers there at the side to hold it and you're going to go through the center straight down. Straight down with your needle. I'm using the 40. You can use a 38, but if you use a 40, then it reduces the distortion of that shape you've already created. So now you've got that sticking out like so. And then all we're going to do, corgis seem to smile, don't they? Corgis seem to have a smile. I don't know anyone with a corgi. I have a terrier. 
but I've had a German Shepherd and a, an Irish Wolfhound as well. So there we go. Take your time with this. It's not right. Pull it off. That's all I can say. Make sure that's in there. And then come round here. And what you want to do is you can, you can get this later. Just find the end position. I might have gone up a little bit high there. I'm just going to come down a little bit here. Keep your finger there. What you don't want, because we will, you're pushing that wool right in. And you, what you want to do is you want to take this loose bit in. You don't want this bit to be pulling in. So keep your finger on that. Yeah, I'm just going to pull that one off because he's got a smile right up to his eye. And what I'll do is I'll trim off what you can do here. If you've done what I've just done, just go back and just trim that top layer off. And then we can pop a little bit of white wool on. And then, so I'm just going to go in here. There we go. I'm going to trim. There we go. And then this side. 40 I'm using. Trim. And there we go. And then I'm just going to, with my 38, I'm just going to bring that up so it's got a little bit more. Pull that down. So you're just teasing that wool into position. I'm just going to leave it at that. I've, I'm not going to push my luck. You faff about as much as you like. That's what needle felting is all about, faff. Okay, so you can see there. Now, at this point, can you see, that could be a seal. I mean, that could be the makings of a seal. You know, you add your little, your little flippers and you add some markings and the little ears. You know, it could, it could be, you know, there's so many things you could turn that into which is why I'm saying these techniques lend themselves to so many things. There we go. Happy with that. Now I'm going to leave the eyes just there. And I'm going to get my wool top. And I'm just basically, I'm going to pull it over the head and I'll put that stripe in afterwards. And I'm going to pull it over the eyes. Like so. And I'm just going to poke it on. Right, here we go. So when you put your eyes in, or you can put your eyes in afterwards, but I'm just going to felt in around these. reveal the eye there we go there it is and then that allows that wool so i just find that easier than sort of trying to work with just pop all the wool over and then put the eyes on afterwards if you want take them off after you've done the nose 
Um, there we go. There we go, you see that? Coming along nicely. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little bit of the brown, tiny bit of white. I'm just going to do one of the um, eyebrows. There we go. So take a little bit of the brown and the white, and then just as you did with the nose, just roll it in your fingers to mat it a little bit, but leave those ends loose. And then felt the loose bit at one side of the eye, and then do the same at the other side. If you've got too much, take a bit off, but you can. Um... You can just felt that in. And there we go. So you've created a bit of shape and a bit of height to the eye and you can do it a little bit more like I have on these. Taking the eyes out now, so it looks a bit weird, but can you see there? Then we are going to pop on our ears. Now, um, what I did, um, I'm going to felt this in a little bit because it's a little bit wide. So I'm just going to quickly felt that in. So again, once you've done it, you can go back, you can adjust. Let's take those in and I'm just going to trim a little bit of this off. I don't normally cut, but in this instance, it's fine because we've got a lot sort of going on here. I'm going to get rid of that and we can just pop some wool on top. So when you put your ear on, don't put them too far back at the back of the head because they actually sit more on the top. So just lay it on the top, grab your needle and then just felt in. Don't worry about positioning too much now just make sure that they're sort of sitting more on the top of the head than at the back and can you see how that's on and then what we're going to do here is going to push down through the side and what that does is it becomes sort of part of the head can you see that there I'm just going to bring that down a little bit further, a bit long. So I'm going to push through the back into the head here. So when you trim them, make sure you've still got some loose wool that you can use. But you can also, um, you know, once you've done that, to firm it up, you can add some more. Just to cover that up. So that's coming along nicely. And then again, if one's bigger than the other, you can just pull them down. But just make sure that they're felted on top of the head so that they're actually sitting like so. I'm just going to pull that one down a bit. And then we'll pop the legs on. And then we are just about done. There we go. So I'm going to leave mine at that. I'm just going to felt in this ear here because it's sticking out a little bit. I want it to look like it's actually coming out of the head and not a standalone ear. And then just at the back here, where we've trimmed that wool, just pop a little bit of fresh wool on. And that will tidy up those ends and secure it. And then legs and tail. So leg, make sure you've got it nice and loose. It wants to sit about there. So it wants to be flush with the base, slightly off center. I'm going to go in with my 40. 
because it's quite firm that so i'm fine if i go in diagonally and you see it looks really scruffy at the moment don't worry about that i'm going to come back to it make sure that's on nice and firmly and then if you want it to stop wagging about just come a bit further down just poke through a couple of times take the other leg okay there we go so they are pretty much where they should be and then i'm going to pop some wool over this section here And that, if you just work that for a little while, that covers up any joins that you have. Let me see. So it looks really good. And then the tail, I'm just, the tail that I thought was a leg, um, I'm just going to pop a little bit of my brown on. And all I'm going to do is just touch a little end and then just spread it out and wisp it round. You don't need too much. And I'm just going to bring that further up to the top. So quite random, really. It doesn't really want to be particularly neat. And then I'm going to attach that. Because I want that to sort of stick out. Just need to pop that on a little bit more. Just pop that onto the base. And then I kind of like mine to be sort of sticking out a little bit. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit. Because, of course, I've shortened it now <laughs> when I thought it was a leg. <laughs> so it's not as long as it was. Pop it on and then take a little bit. of wool and just cover that up and then just tidy it up so you can see there so that we're just going to do one final touch which is the um, reverse needle so here we go right this is the reverse needle if you've bought the wool pack this is what you will have so what this does is it just um, adds some fluffiness to the um, the project and what it does is it pulls the wool out I don't know if you can see that wool pulling out this is also great if you've got seams to cover up or using a reverse needle and then trimming the wisps actually works really well the 32 is really fierce so that's why I like to use this because if you've got a 32 it will jump out of your hand unless you're holding it really really tightly and I don't want to lose any of the shape so all you do is go along and then I like to do the tip of the tail as well because I like to have wisps coming out of the tip of the tail so just like so can you see how that's pulling that wool out And it's just brilliant for detail. It's great for above the eyes. You know, you can create some lovely sort of wispy areas. It really softens things. And then because we've got the white underneath, if you wanted to create a little bit of contrast um, around the body, you know, some extra detail, then do that on the head and then just go along and trim. And you can see you've got these little bits just poking through. And then here, you can just brush the coat down. I've got a little sort of eyebrow brush here, but you can just brush that down and leave it nice and wispy. 
And then if you go here, you know, they've got really sort of, they've got really fluffy faces, haven't they? So you could really go to town here. You don't even need to, to trim these. And you can just leave those nice and long if you want. But I, I love using the reverse needle and it just it comes in useful for so many things. It's great for all sorts of projects. You use it with hairs as well. And you see how that's and then you can just sort of wisp it down with your hands if you want. You could trim it close. And we've done the tail. Oh, I always trim the tail. I don't leave the bits long on the tail. I like to trim those. So it just looks kind of fluffy. And then if you want to go around, you know, and tidy it up and, and trim any wisps if you want, if you just make sure you need your scissors are really sharp and close, but don't chop into anything. And then all you need to do is if you've got the crown, is pop your crown on. You know, pop his eyes back in. Um, pop your crown on. If you've got the wool bundles, you'll have a sash in there as well as a little pearl. And that is it. Once your eyes are in, your corgi is done, ready, finished and looking beautifully royal. Thanks so much for joining me. See you again soon.